Do you guys remember the end of your high school senior year? You know, those last few weeks of your last year before the sweet, sweet freedom of summer when you're still deciding what to do with the rest of your lives. Yeah, you have a few weeks of school left to go, but let's be honest, you were mentally checked out of those weeks, if not months ago. And yeah, you have a summer full of parties and beaches to look forward to, but they wouldn't let me do a TED talk on house parties. So I mean deciding on school. By the way, that TED talk would have been Mario Party 3 and Flip Cup. But I'm talking about the excitement of researching universities or colleges. Those stacks and stacks of pamphlets littering your already disgusting rooms. Sorry to all moms out there. I remember the absolute barrage of advice that I got. Teachers, parents, overly involved friends of my mom's, suddenly everyone had an opinion on my perfect future. They dig deep into my childhood to find my perfect path. I didn't just like one thing. I liked sciences as much as I loved history and reading stories. But I had to pick one. Maybe like a lot of you, I had to choose between two very dear passions. Well, the one advice that I did get that was pretty consistent, don't go into arts to be well off. Arts will hurt your career prospects. Well, that made my decision easy. I went into arts. Screw them. I dropped out three years later. I was bored. Uh, I enjoyed my part-time job more than I did my full-time studies. I was sick of taking the same class and the same subject over and over and over. And I didn't see any point to it. I felt like I wasn't getting any real-world skills from my arts degree. I was reading or writing essays, presenting my response to a poem, or reading stories from other cultures going to help me land a cool and impactful job. I wanted real-world skills. For almost a decade, I was a proud university dropout. But mama didn't raise no quitter. And last year, at the age of 30, I went back to finish that degree. And in that time between my third year and my last year, almost 10 years, I learned two things. One, the perception of art degrees that I was given, that students every year here, is so unbelievably wrong. I want to share why art degrees are not only still relevant, but more important and rewarding than ever before. And two, traditional university curriculums and their stubborn adherence to this arts versus science divide is betraying the future of their students. Life isn't like when medieval schools created these faculty separations. That's literally how old faculty separations are, as old as jousting and older than toilets. How can we think that's still the best way to teach modern students? But we'll start with the first topic. Arts degrees are still relevant and even more important than ever before. So what is an arts degree? Art degrees are the creative and liberal arts, the humanities, the social sciences, languages, and culture. Included in arts degrees, you got political science, history, education, legal studies, drama. Our degrees aim to be to provide a more rounded education, focusing more on deepening cultural understandings and developing the soft skills like writing and communication skills, critical thinking, and, and understanding human relationships. Possibly because of this, there's a stigma associated with arts degrees. Exactly because they don't teach technical or hard skills, how can they possibly set their students up for the real world? Well, the numbers seem to agree. For 10 years in a row, enrollment in Canada for arts fields has dropped year over year. In the same time span, enrollment in STEM, that is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, that has increased year by year by year. This pattern repeats across Western countries. The US, two years ago, the Department of Education proudly announced that they had not only fulfilled President Trump's directive to redirect $200 million of funding towards STEM education and away from arts, 
but they actually voluntarily surpassed that figure by an additional $79 million. In Australia, they recently announced that they would be significantly increasing the cost of, of arts courses, while at the same time decreasing the cost of STEM courses, an effort they say is to create more job-ready graduates. Well, why was an 18-year-old version of me right about arts and Trump wrong? Well, for a lot of reasons, but specifically with arts, I actually thought I was wrong too. I don't think that now. I'll tell you why. Here are LinkedIn's most desired skills of 2020. Creativity, persuasion, collaboration, adaptability, and emotional intelligence right up there with the hard skills. In a sign of the changing perception of soft skills, 2018's list contains just four soft skills and 25 hard skills. These soft skills are up there because they're so desired because they're high indicators of lasting success across multiple roles. The specifics of a, of a position can be taught through a comprehensive orientation, but being able to fit in with the team, adapt to novel challenges in creative ways, that is one, nearly impossible to train on the job, and two, very hard to find. Rather than memorizing definitions and formulas, we art students instead learn to write reflectively and creatively on abstract human subjects. Describe to me, in 5,000 words or less, the topic of revenge and love in two different Shakespeare plays. How is it different? And what does Shakespeare reveal about himself? So exercises like this that teach us art students to love literature and expression. Beautiful and passionate expression based on the shared human experience. I think that was the actual assignment in third year that made me want to drop out. But it does teach us to learn history, what makes people love and fight. We explore different cultures, different worldviews, emotions, and motives. Through that academic torture called essay papers, we demonstrate our improving emotional intelligence and abstract thinking. Our soft skills developing, and we don't even realize it. At least I didn't not for years later. I remember my boss coming up to me, saying he had some last minute, very important documents that needed to be done overnight. Could I help? Well, flashback to university me, starting a 10 page paper the night that it's due. Sorry, Professor Nicky, if you're listening. Surrounded by cold pizza and warm energy drinks, I could write all night. I started appreciating what that art degree had really been teaching me. Clear, effective, and fast writing? Well, thank you, arts. Art students can pull examples like that up everywhere. How presenting in seminar had helped them be better public speakers and gave them the courage to speak up in work meetings. Or how psychology electives had taught them how to coach friends and family through hard times and endeared them around the office. Soft skills like these are becoming more and more important as the pace of change continues to get faster and faster. It used to be that what you learned in school could last your entire career, but that just isn't the case anymore. The average American will work 10 jobs by the age of 40. David Deming of the Harvard Kennedy School has been researching STEM careers and the changing skill requirements of modern work. Put simply, STEM graduates take a big lead on salary in their first job compared to their arts peers. That's what's created that stigma. But that advantage is erased by the age of 40. Deming has two explanations for this. One, technical skills become obsolete. As younger graduates are taught the in-demand tech of that year, older graduates must try to learn it on the fly while still working. Of those te uh, top 10 hard skills on LinkedIn's most desired list, only three from the 2020 list were on the same list in 2015. And that's just a difference of five years. Imagine 15 or 20. As increased competition drives down wages and increases worker supply, a larger proportion of STEM grads exit their fields compared to other majors. The 2014 US Census 
found almost three quarters of STEM grads aren't even in STEM jobs anymore. Second reason Deming found was that soft skills become appreciated more as a career goes on. At the same time that hard skills taught years ago are becoming obsolete, the soft skills needed for management and leadership become valued. Know-it-all graduates need a wise and leader. Just like the hobbits needed Aragon to get from Bree to Rivendell, so do these graduates need someone to take them to those greener pastures. Someone who may not know the specifics anymore, how and when to make second breakfast, but can manage conflict, provide clarity, and passionately convey goals. Well, hello, soft skills. Clearly, Aragon is an arts alumni. Speaking of alumni, let's look at the education background of the Fortune 100 CEOs. Three quarters have bachelor's degree in either arts or business. Business makes sense. They are in business after all. But business and arts share a common ancestry. About 800 years ago, it was part of the faculty of arts. They share a lot of the same teaching philosophies. Business is regarded as a social science, which is an arts degree. But let's just focus on arts just for fun. Two CEOs of finance companies have degrees in history, Amex and Bank of America. Goldman Sachs, Nike, Target, Cisco CEOs, degrees in political science. The only noticeable pattern is most tech companies have CEOs with STEM degrees. And that makes sense. But even there, we find exceptions. Slack is led by a philosophy major. YouTube by a lit major like me. But it's not all sunshine and daisies. Bill Gates, founder of the, second, or the biggest public company by market cap, he was a hater in 2011 when he said we should reduce spending on arts because it doesn't create jobs. Well, the current president of Microsoft, an arts grad by the way, he had this to say. At one level, AI will require that even more people specialize in digital skills and data science. But skilling up for an AI-powered world involves more than science, technology, engineering, and math. As computers behave more like humans, the social sciences and humanities will become even more important. Languages, art, history, economics, ethics, philosophy, psychology, and human development courses can teach critical, philosophical, and ethics-based skills that will be instrumental in the development and management of AI solutions. Critical, philosophical, and ethics-based skills. Sounds a lot like soft skills. Not a bad endorsement, right? Well, I got one better. And it's tied to the second overall point of my talk. The first one was that art degrees have a bad rep. That they're actually a safe and lucrative choice that you can recommend to your kids. The second point is that the divide between arts and sciences in universities is counterintuitive. You saw that quote. That's the president of the biggest public company in the world warning us about some Terminator style takeover by AI where only arts stands in the way. It isn't John Connor that saves the world, it's Shakespeare. But let's get an opinion from the founder of the second biggest public company in the world, famous rivalry, Apple and Microsoft. Three days after Bill Gates pooped in the arts in 2011, Steve Jobs had this to say. It's in Apple's DNA that technology alone is not enough. It's technology married with the liberal arts, married with the humanities, that yield us the results that make our hearts sing. Is anyone familiar with Apple's history? Your screens, I can't actually hear you. Apple was founded by Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak. Steve Wozniak was the electronics engineer, the brains behind the computer's brains. It was Woz that created the software that led to the first ever popular home computer, the Apple II. It actually saved Apple from going into bankruptcy. Jobs, though, he was the university dropout, like me. He did go for one year, focusing on art studies. Would you look at that? He credits a calligraphy course as his most transformative class. It's actually what inspired the invention of different fonts being available 
on word processors. A major selling point on that Apple II. Imagine a world with only Times New Roman. That's terrifying. Jobs was the face of Apple. He's the outspoken leader with a vision. It was him that combined masterful storytelling with animated presentations and innovative projects to make a ding in the universe. The iPod, iPad, iTunes, iPhone, heck even Pixar would not be here if it wasn't for his communicated vision. Jobs and Woz show how arts and STEM should work together. An interdisciplinary one-two punch for students to make the most of all of their talents, not just half of them. When we defund arts and discourage arts because we don't see any value in it, we have an educating problem. When three quarters of STEM grads aren't in STEM jobs, we have an educating problem. And when we make kids single out one passion to follow for the rest of their lives because a literally medieval old system tells us that's the best way to teach, we have an educating problem. Arts and STEM together is the only job-ready graduate. Out of the 36 classes that I needed to take for my undergrad degree, only 10 could be outside my faculty. 10 out of 36. It's a failing grade for providing a modern, lasting, and desired education. STEM graduates could benefit from the soft skills that arts teaches and is proven to prolong careers, to keep STEM grads in the field that they love. Art students, we could benefit from the technical foundations and analytical knowledge needed to relate with STEM in order to create and bring to life new realities. That 18-year-old version of me was right to go into arts. The 21-year-old me that dropped out could have been kept better interested with a better mix of practical and engaging STEM courses. Why nurture one passion when you can cultivate two? When it comes time for me to give advice on what someone should do for school, I just hope I don't have to force a decision between two passions. I say follow them both and make the world's heart sing. Thank you.